Thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. Good afternoon, all. Um, uh, I'm Cedric Thomas. I run OW2. We are an open source organization, and we host uh, uh, three dozen projects. Many of them are uh, targeting infrastructure uh, functionalities, and there are complex components for uh, the information systems. So we, we don't deal much with, uh, we deal with uh, software developers, but we also deal with end users. And we are often confronted to the um, the situation where end users uh, often prefer proprietary solutions, and we realize that it's often because uh, open source software might not uh, fit exactly their expectations. So um, this is sorry there. So this is uh, about open source for the business decision maker, for the aver average, uh, uh, the conventional manager, the person who is not necessarily uh, sold on open source software, not an open source activist, and someone who really uh, are, would much prefer dealing with proprietary vendors. Uh, and the thing is, between the average developer and many developers in this uh, conference, uh, we have the developers, uh, they talk to other developers, and uh, this morning, for instance, one of the keynotes uh, uh, highlighted the fact that we should stop looking inward, but looking outside and consider ourselves that we fit in a broader market. And this broader market is out there, but from the point of view of the developer, the broader market is a little bit far away, and we think there is a gap between the dev developer, between the software that is developed and what the end user is looking for. It's a little bit, if I, if I may take this analogy, like uh, music. This is music, and music is the code, but what the user wants is really the final project. So this is not exactly what you read, this is what you feel, this is what you enjoy, this is where the value is. As I said, programmers write code. Code is text. You don't do anything with text. But what end users want, it's a product. And a product is not just the code. It's code plus a lot of things. Documentation, training, contracts, pricing, roadmaps, support, other, uh, other users, marketing, etc. And in the, case, in the case of open source software, there is even more. They need to trust the software, because they don't know, because some, for many conventional decision makers, the open source software is a little bit evil. So they want to trust the software, they want to know where it goes. So this is what they want, and that creates the value. But the value is not only created by the developer, it's created by the ecosystem. The ecosystem are the distributors, the systems integrators, the consulting companies, the contributors themselves, the users themselves, even the open source organizations. We add value, we create the ecosystem that makes the software, the open source software, valuable, usable by the average decision maker. So the average decision maker doesn't choose just on the good face, they want to know about uh, the software, the components. Take, um, let's take another analogy with the automotive industry. Today, the leading car manufacturers don't manufacture all the cars. What they do, they integrate. They own the customer, they own the trend, they, um, they imagine the next car, they analyze the needs, and then they have all the parts done, provided by uh, third-party providers. The front-end is provided, the lightning is provided by, uh, it's not by them. Um, the dashboard, the seating arrangement, the, uh, the, all the glass parts, all this comes from different suppliers. Uh, of course, today, the electronics, uh, all this comes from different suppliers. And we have the same thing in, in, the, in the software industry. This analysis by Sonotype uh, show, uh, found that 80 to 90% of new software come from uh, reused components. They don't say whether they're open source components or not, but it's good, uh, uh, a good proportion of this uh, reuse comes from open source software. So we need to know what the components are about. And there is a very busy landscape out there about uh, measuring components and, and understanding where they come from. So many of the tools have been, uh, uh, some of the tools have been uh, described here in this conference about how we understand the, the, the software, about compliance, governance, etc. And many tools are there to help us understand what's behind the components, what's in the, all the components, and to make sure that we can trust these components. 
Even at OW2, we have developed our own platform for collecting data and reporting data to the users. We survey the, the quality of the code, the IP of the code, etc. And that generates a lot of data. We generate too much data, in fact. We publish this data. We want to be transparent. The uh, users can access all about the, the, the projects we host, but can they make decisions? We are at this stage where we feel that we need to help the decision maker. The decision maker is not the open source software architect or developer. The decision maker we have in mind is the average decision maker who often selects a component, a software, on the, on the reputation of a name. So we need something simple. And we are thinking of moving towards a more simple synthetic indicator. That's what we're doing. So when we're looking at a simple indicator, we have something called the, uh, uh, the NASA uh, technology readiness levels. You've heard of these readiness levels. It's a type of measure measurement that uh, um, uh, uh, allows us to um, understand, to evaluate the uh, maturity of a technology. It's been very successful. It's been reused by the Department of Defense, Department of Energy, and now it's, uh, you see it in any uh, research project proposal. That's what it looks like. It has nine levels, and these nine levels go from the bottom, where you only have the idea of the algorithms, something that no one can do anything with, up to the top level, where you have the, the components that has been uh, orbiting uh, around the, the, the planet and came back if it had to come back from useful to uh, use, uh, uh, from useless <laughs> to useful. So we, we feel that we can do something like that, and we have developed our own template. Like the NASA uh, TRL levels, we've developed the uh, W2 market readiness levels. From a code that is in the process of being developed to established project, established product that any average user can, can trust. But this is just, it's a good idea like that. In fact, we have to develop this. And we need to rely on data. We need to rely on tools that scan the codes, that scan the communities. We need to collect a lot of data. And that's what I would like, uh, I wanted to share with you this evening. And asking contributions. So it's a kind of request for comment, what I'm doing here. And we have established already our methodology. The methodology is in five steps. The first step is to define the metrics. Metrics that are relevant to what we want to do, to what we want to express. Metrics that is available as well. There is no need to uh, looking for metrics that cannot be uh, collected. This metrics, we have to collect it, but there is a feedback loop because it evolves, like any index, like, uh, like uh, stock exchange index, they evolve, so we need to be able to, uh, to update this as uh, the, the situation evolves. Then these metrics have to be put in a certain format. Then next, once we have these metrics in our mind, and when I say format, it can be dates, etc., we want to uh, collect these metrics. And collecting the metrics can be done in several uh, ways. Automatically, through many of the tools that are out there. For instance, we use, uh, we, we use Phosology and now we use ScanCode. There's Sonar Cube. We have lots on GitLab. Where, I mean, the, uh, the development uh, infrastructure that's used by uh, developers uh, provide a lot of metrics. But there are also some other types of metrics about communities, about the governance, about the, the history, where the codes come from, where they want to, how they manage the contributors. And this is uh, to be collected manually. So we have tools and forms. Once we have collected the metrics, we have to, to process them. Processing the metrics means for um, putting them all in the same format and normalizing them, and then fitting this into some models, models that would produce some results. Now here, the issue is that the models should not be black box, they should be absolutely understandable with, uh, by end users. That's what we've done a little bit with our, uh, the stage where we are. We've published, we're publishing the models. Now another next stage, once we have the models and some results, we have to publish these results. And publishing the results, it's other, another, another challenge, in fact, because there are ways to publish this, uh, the results. Uh, are they published automatically? Where is it just graphical? Uh, do we feed this into uh, uh, downstream systems? These are some uh, key issues. And again, there are always feedback loops to complete the system. And in fact, the, the last 
um, stage is to share that, to communicate, to reach out, and to make sure that we don't work on our own in our own ivory tower, but that we share with uh, uh, the, um, everyone and that we align with the market expectations. So that's that's what we want to do. But uh, doing this is very much. Um, um, it seems simple like this, the idea is simple, but then as we're executing this, and we are uh, about a year into developing this, uh, we realize that there are lots of questions. It opens up avenues, boulevards, and uh, uh, lots of uh, side streets, and uh, uh, it's, there are, it raises questions. The more you get into it, the more questions it raises. For instance, some of the questions are the metrics I've just mentioned, that uh, you have to, a trade-off between what's possible and what's uh, available. But then the project support, community for, uh, or for profit. Is it one rational fits all? Or do we, have to, do we need to have two different uh, processing or, do, or scales for, for the project? Uh, there is a different perspective. The business perspective is versus the engineering perspective. The engineering perspective is the one that uh, is from the developer's perspective point of view, where you consider the progress of your project towards the market. But the business perspective is not that at all. The business perspective is that from the business manager who's used to uh, deal with a mature business project and just won't expect that. So he says, do we have this or not? So it's not at all the same, the same way. The context is different. Uh, sci the scientific world, and there is a lot of open source in the scientific environment, it's not exactly the same, doesn't behave, doesn't expect the same things as the business world. Uh, process. Uh, I mentioned the data collectors with the forms, so we have automated collection of data or manual ray data. We have uh, rational that is different, so uh, do you want to measure something and provide snapshots? Or do we have to measure the evolution? Is it the, the changes that we want to show? Do we, uh, how, how often do we uh, update the, the data? We can update uh, weekly, uh, monthly, or second by second, or, or upon events, like each commit can trigger an update, uh, or build can, be, can uh, trigger an update. That's the sort of things we, we still have to, to decide. And then the representation, uh, to finish with this, uh, you have the, the, the radar representation is probably uh, good, uh, but it's a bit complex. Um, and there's something we want to avoid. We don't want to create a hierarchy between our projects because a project that is in the beginning of the phase is just as good, as valuable as a project that is already an established uh, um, project, uh, product, well supported and well recognized by the market. So we don't want to create this kind of hierarchy and we're still struggling or uh, deciding how we're going to uh, show that. The, the starring, uh, stars is maybe one way, the, 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 the temperature thing is uh, maybe another one. So that's just to, to share very quickly with you some uh, what we do, some of the questions. Um, the, the metrics, uh, today we are measuring uh, about two, uh, 200 metrics. Uh, there are, yeah, the number of data points are at least 200 data points. We could have gone to 3,000 data points. We, you have to keep this manageable. So again, we can go on, and those are the, the challenges. And uh, as uh, often, it's all about execution, and the devil is in the details. So that's why we need to uh, uh, collaborate with you. And uh, this is a process that is totally open. There is a web page uh, there, and we welcome any kind of contribution, comment, or feedback. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. What would be a comparable uh, assessment platform for proprietary software? Oh, this, there are some um, projects, very comparable projects. There is the, uh, the Chaos, the Linux Foundation, that's been uh, doing this in the uh, framework of the uh, core uh, infrastructure initiative. Uh, there were many other projects. Uh, there was a European project called Calypso that uh, aimed at uh, uh, evaluating uh, open source software. There was another project which we are leveraging, which was called uh, Riscos. Uh, not very good name because it's supposed that uh, uh, open source software is risky, so it's not. But uh, it's it had some uh, uh, inputs. Uh, there are currently um, there is currently a, a European project called Crossminer who's uh, uh, developing technologies to collect data. Uh, and we collect data from, um, uh, from the development tools, but also from mailing lists, from comments, uh, do some sentiment analysis. All this is something that we try to automate and that we gradually incorporate into our uh, methods. And, uh, and outs sorry, outside of open source? 
Pardon? Outside of the open source world, like, uh, is there a successful uh, com comparative uh, platform for proprietary software? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but if you know of any, I'd be happy to look at them. So why is why do we particularly need such a platform for open source uh, rather than proprietary software? Because there's plenty of you know non-open source applications which have questionable quality origins and support as well, right? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, this is only for open source software, right? Actually, we started this for our own code base. And we realized that it was a, a, a topic that interested uh, uh, many people. Uh, the, it's a topic that also helps um, instill a little bit of uh, business awareness in the mind of the developers. So they have to understand that they, they may be the center of the world, but the world is big out there, and that uh, they, they develop for end users that are confronted with uh, offerings from proprietary vendors. So why is it necessary to have platforms like this only for open source and not for non-open source products? Like, why would a, a rating system for the thousands of proprietary desktop or software as a service applications not um, also be necessary? I'd say because open source software is developed in a way that is much more transparent and that uh, at least for in our case, we have access to our own infrastructure. There's one thing I have to mention is that at W2, we run our own independent infrastructure, so we can access to all the, 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 the data we, we want. So for this, we are totally sustainable. We have no allegiance to any IT giants or any uh, economic power, so we can carry on uh, uh, analyzing our components. Another thing is that there is more data available on open source projects than on proprietary software. Uh, but it's true that I've been approached by uh, large companies who said uh, we could apply that to our own code base. The same way you have open source and inner source, inner source that has nothing to do with open source. Well, here they said we can follow your approach. We're keen to learn from uh, what you uh, discover and uh, your maturation, and maybe implement something like that inside our own, um, on, uh, for our own code base. And I think of big, big uh, companies from tens of thousands of people, I mean, and a huge uh, software development. I have another question, but are there other, other questions for us? No? Okay. Um, do you think that given that there are not comparable platforms for proprietary software that serve the same purpose, do you think that uh, your platform of OW2 could result in the perception that uh, these open source applications are less uh, stable or trustworthy uh, as a group which is why there is a need for such an independent rating and assessment and analysis in the first place. Because if you have one category of applications which are proprietary that do not have independent ratings and assessments like this, and you have another group that do, then the implication could be that the second group is in, more, is in greater need. But it's not because we're trying to make them uh, more uh, transparent and um, give the end user information in order to build trust uh, in this open source software that we acknowledge that this open source software is not trustable. It's not the case. No, no. We think it's trustable, but we need to demonstrate it. So that the idea is that we have, we have a project that is mature, and they have customers, they have uh, uh, users, they have uh, uh, um, uh, distributors, systems integrators working on them, consulting, all this, and that is part of what some of the uh, people want. They expect this on top of everything that has been discussed in this conference with regard to the quality of the code, etc., and the compliance, which is basic, but then we need to go a little bit one step, one step further to uh, complete the, the whole process between the programmer and the average decision maker who writes the check. I'll just keep going then. Uh, so do you have uh, some kind of buttons or certification or, or uh, visual uh, uh, signs of accreditation for the, for the projects which you have assessed uh, that could add value to those, to those products? Uh, we're still working on the visual representation of the project. So as I said, there could be the radar thing and uh, we, we want to uh, move away from this because it's probably a bit too complicated. And that's why we want to develop this synthetic indicator so that the average decision maker, we say, okay, this is rated seven or eight. It's good, it's not, it's bad. I don't want any four. I want to go for, uh, for that, that level minimum. And what does that uh, imply? That implies that I have something that has all the, the, all the complements that is not just code, but it's something that can, can trust yeah. for the long term. 
Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, that's okay. And in order to uh, be, be a member of your platform and to have this assessment done, uh, membership fees are paid by organizations if they exist in, in order to cover the cost of this? Is that, how, is that how it works? No, there's no business model there. So if uh, no, no, we, my we just, do, we just do that to promote the code base. Okay. And uh, the, we will benefit if our project benefits. So who are your members? Who are your paying members in that case? Or who will they be? Uh, we are a non-profit organization. We are financed by membership. So our members um, pay the fees. That guarantees our independence. And with this money, we have a, uh, an open source governance for the board of directors and the technology council, by the way. Both are our instances of making decisions. And they decide and they approve this kind of project and decide, yes, this is a good thing to do for the good of our code base and our projects. So it's open, but uh, instead of just doing it uh, just for ourselves, the idea is to share it with everyone and uh, make sure that uh, it's done in the open and uh, gather as much feedback from the market as possible. So if I wait long enough, maybe you'll add my uh, project uh, without me having to pay a membership fee? <laughs> no. Uh, right now, we don't have the resources to apply this to all the open source world. Okay, So we, we concentrate on the project we can... Um, uh, interact with, which are the uh, the uh, the project. Actually, we have project incubation, maturation, mature, and the archive. We concentrate on the mature project at the moment, and uh, as you at this stage, we need to interface with the project leaders because some of the data uh, has have to be uh, get somewhere. For instance, if we look at uh, some code quality uh, data, uh, unit tests are uh, exist. Sometimes they're not uh, very much accessible, so we need to uh, streamline this with the project leaders, and then there are also all the type of information with regard to the community, the way they manage uh, contributors, as I mentioned, the type of uh, software development environment they have beside, beyond the, the other two infrastructure. So this is uh, have to be documented, and most of this information has to be gathered on a form with, uh, with the, uh, collaboratively with the project leader. No, I'm going to the next one. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Cedric.